Your book is God No, and I, and what I one of the things I loved about it is you try to tell us why an agnostic and an atheist need to kind of get together. Well, you know, uh, agnostic was to begin with a weasel word. You know, Tom Huxley, who was Darwin's uh, bulldog, uh, was going to go out and speak for Darwin. Darwin didn't like confrontation a lot. So he didn't want to say the word atheist. We said the word agnostic. But agnostic answers a different question than atheist. It's just two different issues. If, um, if you're asked, is there a God, and you answer, I don't know, that's agnostic. If you're asked, do you believe in a God, then you have to answer yes or no. And if your answer to the first is, I don't know, the answer to the question is pretty much no. Well, you're introducing logic into this now. <laughs> it, it's awful that you can blame, you know, in the, the last part of the... Um, but when did you come to this? I'm curious. Because I, I, I try to be literally humble about this. I know people snicker at this. Well, I, well, I think... Because I did not come to this early in life. I mean, I got rid of my Catholic upbringing early. But I never... I didn't really think about religion for a long time. And when I was scared, I would go, oh, God, please help me. It, it was my... It was the pastor of my youth group. In, uh, in uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts. My, my parents wanted me to go to a youth group, and I did. And he suggested reading material. I believe I was the only one who read it. I believe that the best way to become an atheist is to read the Bible. <laughs> cover to cover, from beginning to end. But I don't mean... Yes. Yeah. I don't mean read it with Bible study. I don't mean read it with alibis. I don't mean this is an allegory for this. I mean pick it up like my book and read it from beginning to oh, end. Yeah. It's, and it, it's, it's, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. And you, well, especially the, the Old Testament is. Yeah, the but, New Testament the is... The New old. Testament has all of that stuff that they just kind of slide over that's so anti-family. You know, Jesus says over and over, abandon your family and come with me. I mean, that, to me, that's more horrific than the stuff in the Old Testament, which is at least about, about tribes and warfare. Uh, this is about, this is about if the people you love most in the world, you must love Jesus more. And the whole idea of that is, is sickening. And I start the book by saying, uh, if God, however you perceive God, I don't care, you know, he, she, or it, came to you, however God speaks to you, and told you to kill your child, would you do it? And if the answer is no, then in my booklet, at some level, you're an atheist. And if the answer is yes, I hope you reconsider. Right. Uh, I mean, I believe... Of course, that, that did happen in the Bible. Well, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and then when you But argue, it was a practical joke. <laughs> exactly. When you bring it up to people, they say, but God said, no, no, you don't really have to. <laughs> and the other argument is that I, that I find uh, so interesting is uh, you said earlier on at the beginning of the show about morality. And my feeling yeah. about morality is if you're doing what you're doing for reward and punishment, right. it's not really morality. No. When I'm raising my children, right. my job, my job, if you believe that parents have that much of an effect on children, which they have less than we think, but my job is to get my children to act in ways that are moral when there is no fear and no reward, but to do it for the sake of doing it. When you add everlasting life as the reward and everlasting torment as the punishment, there can be no morality. We need to treat each other well because we love each other and not for reward and punishment. And it's, all, it's all about love.